What up everyone? How's it going? I'm CliffRacer666. Welcome back to another video. Today's topic is a little bit different from last time. And today it's going to be about the Super Nintendo, or it's Super Nintendo adjacent at least. So it's a little bit different. And the item I'm going to be talking about is the Game Mars Super Disc FC301 game copier. And I had a little bit of experience as a kid seeing a game copier at somebody else's house. I remember going to somebody's house and seeing something very bizarre that I had never seen for a Super Nintendo before. And it was like this big blob. It was this big ugly blob on the top of this guy's Super Nintendo. But it had a bunch of games on it that you could play. So, I didn't really understand what it was as a kid. I knew that it had like a floppy drive on it because it looked like it took floppy disks. But we didn't use the floppy disks to play the games. The games were already inside of it. So, I, finding out later on, some of these can hold a hard drive inside of them. And mine doesn't, but some of them can. So, but I remember playing Super Off Road off of the hard drive. And I remember playing Nickelodeon Guts, which, I mean take it for what it is I mean neither one of them are exactly great games but Super Off-Road is okay the Super Nintendo version of it's not terrible but I got a great deal on one of these a couple years ago and I thought okay this is really cool and it came with a bunch of floppy disks but the floppy disks were all in very poor condition I mean it came with maybe almost a hundred floppy disks and I think probably only about ten of them actually worked so I thought, well, uh, I'm going to get one of those floppy disk emulators because I knew about floppy disk emulators from the internet, from computer users online, and from my work where people who run CNC machines use floppy disk emulators on older machines because they don't want to deal with floppy disks either, but they have to use that interface because that's how old the machine is. You know, it's an expensive machine to replace. Today I'll be showing some of what it's like to run some games off of here and it's very bizarre to uh, get games on here you ha use a USB stick but what you have to do is format the USB stick into a hundred images of a 3.5 inch floppy disk so you got a hundred flop a hundred virtual floppy disks to scroll through right so the way to get games is to burn images or write images of ROMs onto these virtual floppy disks and so it gets even more complex if you have to uh, or if you're trying to load a ROM that is more than 1.44 megabytes because then you need to split that ROM and then write it onto two floppy disks so there's a few sp small complicating factors that kind of deal with this <clears throat> so you gotta have a cartridge to play the super disc and the only one I, or not the only one I use but the one that I mostly use and this is the only time I ever use this cartridge because I hate this game it's Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures so screw you Pac-Man I hate your guts okay so now I'm gonna show some gameplay footage and of what it's and some footage of what it's like when it's turned on because as you can see this floppy emulator has got a little LED counter on it and it's got these two buttons on it that you use to cycle through the different floppy disk images so okay there's the startup screen and here you can see this is what it looks like when you just immediately start booting into a disk and you can see it loading that's uh, Umihara Kawase, it's a Japanese only Super Nintendo game, or Super, Super Famicom game I should say. And then now you can see I will switch to the second disc and it will continue loading.
like to have. This is a cool game. I think that <clears throat> I think that this game, as far as like, you know, I guess you would call it almost like a physics puzzle platformer, because it is really when you think about it. Because basically, what you're doing is you're hooking your fishing line on different parts of the level and trying to swing around and weasel your way to the end of the level and pick up fish and try to get extra points and extra lives. It gets pretty intense in the in the later levels. I've never beaten the game, but I, I want to. I'll probably beat it eventually. I think the graphics in this game were kind of funny. I mean, you can tell... Uh, I don't know if it was like a rush, kind of a rush job or what, but I don't know. It's kind of like, I don't want to say it's low effort, but the backgrounds are maybe a little bit low effort. They're just like digitized photographs that are in black and white. So that is what, like a riverbank back there? But the music makes up for it in my opinion, and the gameplay itself is very fun. So. I also like the way that you can sort of, I use the word weasel, weasel your way through the levels in, in a few different ways, you know what I mean, like what I'm doing here, which you can kind of tell I got into a little bit of a, a tight spot right here, but uh, you know, I was just screwing around, just uh, capturing some game footage, you know, and uh, I think this is kind of funny right here. Oh, uh, kind of intense right there. Yeah, you can do a lot of really fun stuff in this game. So this is a multi-disc file. This this Super Mario World hack requires three discs because it's it's quite a large size so you'll see me go through loading the three different discs here I put this hack on here because I I've played this hack before back when I was making uh, raspberry pies like maybe five years ago or whatever I was doing those raspberry pies and I was into checking out different Mario World hacks and this is one that I remember from that time so it is very difficult, just like any other ROM hack that you're going to download. I mean, they're all very difficult, so. But it's still cool, it's still fun. Here's a level that I think is pretty cool, and it's kind of a tough level, you know, of course, just like they all are. And, you know, these levels, I feel like, particularly in Mario World hacks, it's just really long levels, and if you get a checkpoint, it's very, very lucky, because a lot of these ROM hacks do not participate in the checkpoint system. <laughs> but yeah, I recorded this, I thought I, I was having a pretty good run of it, so... Thought I'd throw this in here. Alright, 
will. <clears throat> Alright everyone, that's my uh, video about the FC301. So, thank you for checking it out. And I hope you guys have a great day and have a good weekend. I'll catch you later. Get you up, get you up, get you up.